If you guys want a tactic that can score over 250 goals a season, if you do, then do stick around. So guys, it's Josh from FM Scout, and today I'm going to be bringing you the tactic that can score over 250 goals, and it did in two of the tests that we've done, made by Randy Marsh, so full credit goes out to him. I'm going to credit him a little bit more when we actually break down the tactic, but what a tactic this guy has made, sensational. So we're going to kick it off with Valencia. Now, we've tested with five teams as always. We've gone with two elite sides, one middle range side, which is this, and then two lower standard teams. Now, what I've done is I have got it on my other monitor here of the total amount of goals scored, including every single game from the season. So obviously this only tracks the Spanish division or the division that you're playing in. But we're also going to go over the results that got as well in terms of league finishes and stuff like that. I want to stress this right away. As soon as you guys start watching, this is purely designed to to attack, attack, attack. It's an outscoring tactic. You are going to concede goals. I didn't concede as many as what I thought, to be honest. But to be honest, it works really well. Just going into games, that attack and mindset, you can outscore almost anyone. And you're going to see that even with the teams that we test, especially with Valencia, finishing third, for example, you can go into a division where you're not favourites and still play very, very well and get good results. So let's go into this now. So we're going to be looking at a third place finish in the Spanish division, winners of the Super Cup and the Spanish Cup, which again is sensational. So you're going to get Champions League football, two Spanish trophies. We're going to be looking at 44 goals conceded. Now, what I'm going to do quickly is the way that I'm getting on tallying up these total goals is, which I'm going to show you here, it's going to be in the squad screen. So Valencia, we actually scored 156 goals this season, which again is sensational. Now, obviously what you're going to expect as we go into the bigger teams, is going to go up and up. It's pretty common sense as you get better players in your team, the more goals you're going to score. But this also was really impressive with the lower teams, which still managed to score a very high amount of goals considering the players and the quality they do have. Going into the data hub then, team defending, 1.16, so over a goal conceded the game, which to be honest was to be expected, but team attacking, over three, with a Valencia side, which are nowhere near favourites to do well in this division, 3.08, which again is very high, especially for this division because there are a lot of defensively solid teams, so to be scoring three plus in this season, or in this save, is very impressive to me, but the main thing that impresses me is the third place finish, the Spanish Cup, and the Super Cup. Now, let's hop over to the next side, which is going to be one of the elite teams, is going to be PSG. Now, PSG, we managed to absolutely destroy the French League. Pretty sure that would be a given, but we really did blow the roof off with that one. We also won the French Cup and the Trophy de Champion. We only conceded 31 goals. Kylian Mbappe score a 94, an 8.25 match rating. Neymar with 29 assists. And if we quickly go into the squad, just so that you guys can feel free to count these up for yourselves. But in fact, I'll do this for you so you can see that we actually managed to score 254 goals using this tactic. Obviously, a very, very good team. Um, when I saw that um, when Randy was doing it, he did show us different stages. Obviously, he played multiple seasons and kept strengthening the squad. And he eventually got over to 300. He actually got up to 344. So you can score way above 250. But I took an average from like two good teams and it is easily over 250. And this is what we've done with this amazing PSG side. Going into the data hub then, team attacking, 4.32. Again, sensational stats, really. Over four goals a game seems absolutely crazy. Decent pass completion as well. And defending is under a goal a game. Obviously, we have got a very good back line and our favourites in this division. So I would say that's to be expected. But this it does it just shows how dominant this tactic is when especially the defensive side isn't even really the part that we care about. We're focusing on getting goals, and that's all we care about. And to be honest, a lot of people do like playing this way. They like going out, just trying to outscore teams, and it's something which I'm enjoying a lot, this FM. But then I'm going to go to the weaker side and the lowest scoring side, where we did only manage to get 127 goals, but no disrespect to any Palmer fans, but they've not got the best quality in this league at all. I mean... To be fair, they've got some good players, but when I'm on about comparing this to like a PSG side, you obviously can't compare. Still, 120 plus goals a season is relatively good. Obviously, 111 of those did come in the actual Serie B. Um, 30 goals coming in here. We're going to have Man coming in with 20 assists. 
Um, obviously winning the division quite comfortably as well. So that's always a positive. Going into the squad, just so you can see, just in case you think I'm lying for whatever reason, it was 127 goals. Going into the data hub then, team attacking, 2.92. So getting on for three goals a game, which to be honest, I'll take with this team. Um, I actually, it was quite funny because I, I forgot that Giagellini, Giagellini Buffon actually played for them. So seeing him was quite a blast from the past, which was quite cool to see. Team defending, 1.21. So at least we're, we're still very comfortable in that department. 1.21 compared to a 2.92 is a massive, massive difference. So you're going to be winning a lot of your games when you're score on that amount and only conceding just over a goal a game and that is exactly what we've done in this division now the next one afc wimbledon now this again a very 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 comfortable league 112 points compared to leighton orient's second place coming in with 88 what we're going to be seeing here is ethan shizley thinks how you say that i do apologize 24 goals and also contributing with 25 assists this guy was literally the hard carry. He carried this team by the looks of it anyway, and was an absolute miracle worker. So fair play to him. In terms of the squad, again, we're going to show you. Now, a lot of this pretty much, we have our players leave and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this of 109 goals. It was actually coming in a total of 152. If you include the friendlies, as we can see here, we had like a 5-0, a few games here. And also you've got to take the cups into account. That is how I got the goals from this. I simply went through the schedule and added on all the goals that we scored that weren't played in the Sky Bet division. In terms of the data hub, team attacking, 2.37. So I believe the lowest scoring, obviously, big thing about testing in this division is the fatigue. We're not one of the favourites either. There's a lot of games to play. Players get injured and it can be very difficult. But still, 2.37 is very impressive. Team defending under a goal a game, which I'm very happy about, considering, as I said, this is not really meant to be focused on that side of the game. 0.85 conceded compared to, as I just mentioned, a 2.37. So again, a huge success. We then hop over to the last test, and that is going to be with another superior side, and that is going to be Manchester City. We're going to be having a Premier League title in the back pocket, also a Champions League in the back pocket, and a Carabao Cup in the back pocket. So a treble winning season, just proven how good this tactic is. You genuinely can go out there and just attack, 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 and still win a trophy like the Champions League against an elite team like Liverpool. Erling Haaland, 111 goals, an 8.62 average match rating, and Bernardo Silva with 26 assists. Now, the good thing about this is, this is a high scorer as well. This is 251 goals coming in from every single Man City player here. Obviously, well, not every single player scored that amount of goals, but a contribution of all these players. Obviously, Erling Haaland, pretty much the main man, fantastic striker, and to be honest, absolutely broken in real life and in the game. We go to the data hub, team attacking. 3.74. I cannot tell you how good that is in the Premier League, the toughest division on earth, and we are rocking up, nearly scoring four goals a game. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Team defending, 0.87, so very defensively solid as well. Literally conceding under a goal a game and scoring close to four. There's very little complaining anyone can do, really. But my one bit of advice with this tactic before we do actually watch a game, and then we're going to break down the tactic, would be... Obviously, the more seasons you play, the better team you have, as we did see Randy Marsh do in his test, and you're going to score more goals. So obviously, you know, if you start off with Man City, we got 251. If I then go and sign, you know, some Wonder Kids, go and sign Bellingham, go and sign all these crazy players, you can actually get it. So he got to 344. So it's endless possibility. So if you are a football manager fan that loves to focus on the attacking side of football, then this tactic, trust me, is for you. Just work with it and stick with it. So I picked out a game where there is just goals upon goals. And this was a French Cup final against Strasbourg, where we did actually manage to win 9-1. So what we're going to do is we're going to watch all of the goals, because then we're going to see a nice mixture of how the goals do actually get in the back of the net, or the ball gets in the back of the net. And hopefully we get to see a little bit of a masterclass. So goals let's have a little look then the first goal is going to be Sarabia getting in behind the back line cutting it back into Hakimi takes his time with it goes back to go forward possibly Vitinha it's a, always a scrappy one it's actually this is a bit like an own goal from Perrin there but Vitinha is going to claim it and that is going to be one nil obviously it's a game we do concede in Lionel Messi 
going out wide into Sarabia, who takes his title, Sarabia, sorry, cuts it back into Lionel Messi, little touch forward and a beautiful finish. Obviously, we are really, we're, we're treated well here. We've got some fantastic options and it is going to be a good watch. A ball goes in behind there. Are they going to have a howler? It's going to be Jorginho cutting it back and Neymar's going to win the flick on into Verratti, who takes his time back into Neymar and that is what you get with quality. Obviously, this system, you are going to be seeing shots taken from anywhere on the pitch because it is all about getting the ball in the back of the net. And that's what this system does so well. It's then going to be Mendes into Neymar on the left-hand side. Cuts it out, but he's going to go back in. A lovely little touch there, making a mockery of the defence. A ball back stick into Sarabia. Cuts it back into Vitinha. And we're seeing a little bit of that good play now. A little bit of that elegant play. Great ball over. Sarabia uses his head, cuts it back into an open Vitinha. And it's an open net because the goalkeeper has committed to try and get it back stick. Hakimi down the right-hand side now, taking his time. Loads of time on the ball. Just running, running, running. Poor from the defence here. Hakimi goes, ball across into Mbappe. And it's an easy goal. Probably the easiest goal he's ever going to score in his life. But honestly, the fullbacks in this system as well. I know I keep saying attack, 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 but even the fullbacks, guys, they look like wingers. They get so far forward. They get so involved, as we saw there with Hakimi. So everyone seems to play a role in this this team. They, they, you know, they get a goal, they assist. The only thing which, you know, the only players that really don't, unless it's from a corner, is the centre-backs. But even they have a crucial role, as I will explain in the tactic breakdown. Ball over the top here into Kylian Mbappe. Great touch through to Sarabia, a player that has had a very good game. Takes his time. Is he going to cut it back? He is. Into Messi. It's a good challenge, to be fair, but Neymar picks it up and sells there with a bit of a howler at his near post, sort of taps it into his own net. A little bit embarrassing there. Hakimi down the right-hand side, taking his time. Again, so much space for Hakimi. You can't give him this amount of time. Sarabia gets through, takes his time with the ball and hits it at the near post. And this is getting very ugly now. Obviously, there's still more goals to come as well. But he has been on fire, to be fair to him. Vitinha, another player that's been quality in the midfield, driving with the ball into Sarabia. Beautiful run, as you can see from Mbappe, in behind. He's never going to miss that, and he tucks it into the top right corner. Fantastic play, fantastic ball, and a fantastic finish. Verratti picks up the ball here, instant ball over the top into Mbappe. He's going to beat him in behind, and to be honest, he's not going to miss this, is he? He's just going to run past him like Sells doesn't exist. Tucks it in the back of the net, and that was actually going to be, or is going to be, 9-0. We do concede a goal here, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens here. We're going to get done by a long ball ourselves, I imagine. We are, it's going to be Belagrade into the Diallo, goes through... I think it come off Kambembe there. It is quite a good finish. But when you're 9-0 up, you don't really need to worry about a goal going in, do you? So, like I said, this tactic is really designed for those people that are a big fan of scoring, scoring, scoring. I'm going to go through a little bit of how you can possibly tweak it if you're trying to hold on to a lead. But to be honest, guys, most games, when you start winning, it's got to be by two or three. So you're going to be quite comfortable. Now, before we do break down the tactic, I do want to quickly say this can be downloaded from the FM Scout website. There will be a link in the description. Full credit goes to Randy Marsh. I can't stress that enough. Fantastic tactic, buddy. Keep it up. But we are going to break it down and we're going to review it. And we're just going to say a little bit of my personal opinions on how you could make it more defensive as well if you need to for whatever reason. So you're going to be looking at a tech attacking, attacking mentality in possession, fairly wide, pass into space. Play out of defence, focus play down the left and the right, overlap right and left, something which we are very familiar with. If you have seen the Julian Nagelsmann tactic, if you haven't, be sure to check that out as well. Shorter pass and directness, higher tempo, work ball into the box. My honest opinion, if you went with hit early crosses and shoot on sight, you possibly could score more, but work ball into the box clearly does work well as well. Mix crosses, run at defence and be more expressive. In transition, counter press, counter distribute to the centre-backs and take short goal kicks. Out of possession, high defensive line, high press line of engagement, much more often prevent short goalkeeper distribution, and that is going to be that side of things done. To the player roles then. Sweeper keeper on the support duty, short or passing selected, nice and simple. The left back is going to be a wing back on the support duty. He's going to be told to be balanced, mark tighter, ease off tackles, stay wider, get further forward, run wide with the ball, and shorter passing. And if that's not enough for you, also cross more often to get the ball in the box. Because there are a lot of players that do get forward and try and, you know, cause issues in that area. On the right-hand side, it's going to be a fullback on the support duty, balanced, mark tighter, ease off tackles, shorter passing, and cross more often. 
Who ball playing defenders? I, I believe I mentioned earlier that these also do play a part. Obviously, having the ball playing defender helps any attacking system because they will slightly drive up. They'll look for more sort of They'll, they'll go for braver passes than your average centre back would, but very simple instructions, balanced and shorter passing selected. And on the left hand side is going to be balanced and shorter passing. So very, very basic. To a midfield, box to box on the right hand side, one of my favourite roles in this game. It's going to be less often, get further forward, run wide with the ball, and more direct passing, obviously, to find them runs in behind. Next to him is going to be a centre mid on the support duty. Balanced, get further forward, run wide with the ball, and more direct pass. And so these two are essentially pivots that do find long balls in behind for this front four and overlapping fullbacks. On the left-hand side, you want an inside forward on the attack duty. Less often, get further forward, cut inside with the ball, shorter passing, and aim the crosses at the centre. On the right-hand side, you want an inside forward on the support duty. Less often, get further forward, cut inside with the ball, shorter passing and aim the crosses at the centre. In the middle, the most attacker midfield player we have is going to be an attacker midfielder on the attack duty, less often, get further forward, move into channels, hold up the ball, shorter passing, cross more often, take more risks, dribble less and aim the crosses at the centre. And the last player, the goal scorer, the Kylian Mbappe, the Erling Haaland, the Edison Cavani, if you want to put him in the same category, it's going to be less often, shorter passing, dribble more, and shoot more often. And that is going to be the tactic broken down for you guys. As I said, you can download it from the link in the description. If you guys have enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like on this one, comment below of what you think of this video, and also do subscribe to the FM Scout channel and check out all of the other videos on the channel. If you guys like me as a creator, you want to see what I can produce as well, my link is also in the description where you can see some of the content that I make on my personal channel. It's pretty much just going to be loads more tactics, one that I've made myself. It's going to be rebuilds and loads of more stuff. So I would like to see some of you guys come and say hi. Be really Really cool and i'll see you guys in the next one